G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Christie David, and each and every week we bring into the studio someone we call best in breed. So someone that's at the top of their game, someone that lives and breeds uh, and eats property, and someone that wants to see their clients succeed in the game of investing in property. Uh, my mantra is very, very clear when we talk with our clients. It's buy with confidence, build a quality portfolio, and ideally build intergenerational wealth through investing confidently in property. And to help you on that journey, uh, there are people that come along for the ride with you that want to see you succeed and prosper. And those people we feel are buyers agents as part of the mix. And today we're joined in the year by two quality guys, uh, Bobby Hayari and Darren Venter from The Investors Agency. And I feel like I should be getting an honorary shirt. <laughs> we should have brought one in. I've got the white shirt, just no logo. Um, <laughs> Sorry, man, it's so close. Take that. Uh, I take a large, by the way. Because it's all those buses. You've got to make space. I'll take a medium, just on time. <laughs> How you guys doing? Very good, mate. Very yeah, good. Thanks very for having well, us. Nah, yeah. thanks for being here. I mean, Bobby was saying before, it's a... Uh, the shoes on the other foot because you you run your own podcast and now you're a guest. Um, how's it feel to be on, on the other side of the table? I much prefer to be a guest. I feel yeah. like being a host, it is a little bit more stressful. Yeah. Uh, you got to you got to run not not to put pressure on you or no, by any means, <laughs> but it's like you know you, you you feel responsible if it's not running smoothly or if things don't go go according to plan as they yeah. are as a get as a, that's how you feel like as a host. But as a guest, it's just you come on and you have a bit of a banter and yeah and um, and have a bit of fun. Interesting perspective because I mean I feel like I have a responsibility mm. to deliver real like real content. So it's yeah. not sales pitch. It's not hey clickbait. It's giving like real good valuable again the value of your time, your energy, your insights. But for people listening, it's like I have a responsibility to give you something that's off value as well, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Perfect. So before we uh, when we kick off, I like to start with what I call the three P's. So a bit about yourself personally about yourself professionally and a bit about your own property journey and that usually is what you're comfortable to share and divulge. I mean, mm. we're having a quick chat. I'm going to look at you first because um, you're directly across but having a chat about family and, and the evolution is now becoming a father. So it might, be, might start there. I'll, I'll start yeah. So personally, a father of two, had my most recent child three weeks ago. Yeah, got a Thank you very much. Got a uh, to you, just a, a girl who's just over two years old as well. She's yeah. like 25 months, 26 months. Um, loving being a father, married to married to my wife, been with her for 16 years. Wow. Um, thank you very much. Um, professionally, uh, had the investors agency for three and a half years. Yeah. Before that, had a landscaping business for about 11 years where we employed 10 staff and that yeah. allowed me to open up the investors agency and spend my time um, full time on the investors agency. Yeah. I don't have the landscaping business anymore. Yeah. Um, I've been quite fortunate where the investors agency has got me to a point where uh, where I've been able to step away from landscaping because mm. property has always been my passion. Fantastic. Uh, in terms of property, I bought my first property over 10 years ago and have been continuously buying since um, across the eastern seaboard of Australia. Congrats, mate. Well done. What a journey. Thank you very much. And, thank you. Um, thank you. And three and a half years in, it's I almost said the journey's just beginning, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. It feels like it feels yeah. like it's been ten. Yeah. Feel like, it feels like I've aged twenty years in the past <laughs> two, two years. But. I didn't have grey hair. So I don't know which was it was it kids or was it the business? I don't know. I'm blaming one of them. <laughs> yeah, no, but love I've been in loving the journey. We're quite lucky that I think both of us um doing something that you love. Yeah. You know, it's it, we're quite fortunate in that yeah. regard that we have a passion that you can monetize. So, and a, a, and a, a unique journey went to partnership as well, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 yeah, the partnership's been incredible. Um yeah. I think we started that sort of two years ago, almost now. Yeah, Nearly and, two um, years. Yeah, that's uh, turned to uh, all bloomed into a lovely blossom, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely doing well for the, the business. Ah, yeah. well done. Yeah, full yeah. yeah, like any, I mean, like any relationship, right? Two different um, perspectives. Mm. Yeah, two two different uh, ways of viewing the world yeah. and how you want to run the business. But, absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, our business we call it healthy friction. So it's yeah. like, okay, what's your what's your what's your outlook? How do you feel that way? And Take it on board and grow and get better. So yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Darren, tell us one. Uh, personally, um, from South Africa originally, yeah. came over uh, when I was twenty-two, I think it was, yeah. um, as a jewelry designer. Which, um, got out of that career, yeah, um, about four years ago, five years ago. Um, but since two thousand seventeen, been in the property game. Uh, started up uh, the business Strat Prop, which is when we started yes. talking together, Correct. right back in. A few years back, I think. A few years, yeah. Um, and then that went really well. Uh, but as businesses go, um, you know, things evolve and you can only really grow as many, or with as many hands as you have. Yeah. And that's kind of where the partnership actually came into play. Yeah. So, um, yeah, personally, 
um, well, professionally rather, we went into the partnership now two years ago, um, right. where we merged Strapprop and the Investors Agency. Yeah. And then, um, yep, that's where it's at today. Well done. Uh, pro- property-wise, as I said, entered into the property game around 2017-ish. Yeah. Um, been buying across the country as well. Um, nice little portfolio in my hands. And well done. Yeah, just keep on going. Excellent. And like I said, living and breathing property, right? So it's only for your clients, yeah. it's for your own self as well. So um, 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 when I say found forward, have there been learnings along your own journey that you go, hey, look, I can see you're going to make that fatal error, for example, this is the headwind yeah. that you're going to face. And then you've seen some people that have really kind of shone under your, under your mentorship as well, right? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, I, I'd say Bobby's probably got more property buying personal experience than myself. Yeah. Um, you know, I was, I mean, you've been doing it for since 18? 10 years, 12, yeah. 12 years. 12 years now. Yeah, right. Um, so, yeah. Um, but you, you learn a lot along the way. And if you've got a good arsenal around you, some good um, legal help and some good mm. people around you, some good mortgage brokers, uh, yeah, it's yeah. One, one piece of the puzzle, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. And, you need it all together. Finance is one part, then it's your your structure, so your tax effectiveness, yeah. for example. That's going to get you to another stage, especially if you were you know, self-employed, mm. as you just mentioned. Uh, and then it's property, you know, property yeah. management as well. So that's going to yeah. uh, call them the goalkeeper almost, right? Defending your asset. And then, that's it. 100%. Yeah, and then you need those relationships. With, yeah. Whether it's doing it yourself or going through a buyer's agent, you mm. then need to double down on, uh, say, investing in yourself. Yeah, and your own knowledge as well. Yeah, absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So, take me through. Well, I guess one of the one of the big uh, beliefs that you have is around positive gearing and being cash flow positive. Yeah, for example, uh, and you've got a real, I guess, emphasis on that. So, take us through why why the emphasis and why that particular strategy as well. Cool. Do you want me? I'll, I'll start, and I'm yeah, sure you'll have plenty it. to add add to it as well. Yeah. Uh, so. For us, we positively give property. Most of our clients, or all our clients, don't just look to buy one property. Yeah, they want to buy two, three, four, five. Yeah. Um, and I feel the reason why ninety percent of investors get stuck at two, it's because they're buying one or two negatively geared properties, mm-hmm. and the banks are then not looking favourable towards them. It's costing them too much to hold. Me personally, my first property was a, a, a small owner occupied. Um, it was a Sydney Northern Beaches purchase. It was a one bedroom. Um, yeah. You know, quite a small one. If I wanted to buy another one in Sydney, I wouldn't have been able to, able to. Mm. So, you know, that's a lesson I learned very early on. Well, I need to buy a positively geared property so I can add to my income and I can continue borrowing from there. Yeah. And to that point, Bobby, and this is what we talked about a lot, and, and you'll hear me say this a lot if you've been listening. When you're younger and you're trying to get into the market, mm-hmm. you're limited by two things. You have a very small deposit because yeah. you're young and you haven't been earning a lot. And the next one is your income level is the lowest it ever will be in your lifetime. <laughs> but you've got this hunger in the belly, I want to buy a property. Um, and so you're literally just buying whatever you can to get into the market, yeah, yeah. which is great, but it also means potentially you buy the wrong type of asset because yeah. you're buying cheap yeah. to get into the market. I can say that firsthand because that was my experience, like just buy anything to get into the market. Yeah. So that's what our parents are probably telling us as well. Just get into the market and it's like, I'm in, but now I've probably got maybe the wrong yeah. type of property perhaps as yeah. well. I mean, one better on Northern Beaches. It's, I mean, that's a good place to start. Well, well, with that, we're quite lucky, and I guess it's a lesson for the listeners as well. It was a, it was owner occupied. We were just moving in. It was a one bedroom, but it had a ninety meter exterior, so garden right. apartment, north facing. Yeah, so nice. it, it was quite. I guess we don't buy apartments for clients yeah. ever. Mm. Uh, we always buy houses. Yeah. But if someone is really looking to buy an apartment, I guess the one thing I would say, and I was going to mention this when you said some lessons learned along the way. Yeah. Um, look for something that's unique. Like mm. look for something that has a big terrace or look for something that has a big courtyard. Look for something that has high ceilings and is north facing. Mm. Um, ra- look for something that's in a small block. Otherwise, if you're just buying that too better Homogenous. in a big high rise building where mm. a developer can buy another block next to you and build another 300 units, mm. well, there's your oversupply issues straight mm. away. Saturation yeah. will just take also, over. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. But also obviously just stay away from the passion purchasing because that's, you know, Obviously, when when it's right on your doorstep, it's a lot easier to find. And uh, mom and dad are obviously going to give you the, the clap of approval there. But yeah. you know, the passion will will bring you close to home because it's easy and it's it's where you feel comfortable. Mm. But um, the data can obviously always help with that sort of. It's it's a really interesting one, Darren. And I mean, I've there's a great I believe the two researchers out of Sydney Uni, and they did the research page, which was I think sixty six percent of investors will buy close to home. Mm-hmm. I'll bring up the article and I can share it uh, as well. 
Um, I've reached out to them to try and get them on, so that's, that's a bit of mention. But uh, the the research showed that that's what investors <coughs> will typically do is try and buy close to home. Mm. And in the last few years in the market, it's hard to deny because everyone did very well. So it's like it's hard to disprove that <laughs> everything <laughs> because went everything went up, yeah. right? So it's like it's hard to deny that strategy worked. There are some investors that doesn't matter what you say. You could literally put two properties, have all the numbers there, and then they'll play, they'll go with that one that stacks up. Then you kind of reveal it and go, that one's interstate, and they'll freak out and take the property that's maybe less valuable mm. or has less return uh, yeah. on investment. So I guess you're dealing with that maybe slight bias Absolutely. as well. So how are you yeah. talking clients through that bias? I feel like it's getting a little bit better now because people yeah. are just going, look, I'm a borderless investor. Probably thank COVID a little bit for that as well, but. I guess you still may have some clients that are like, oh, I'm not sure about Perth. It's done nothing for 10 years, gone backwards, and now it's like the hot spot, for example. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, there's, there's, I wouldn't say there's an exact, well, there's a, there are equations to it, obviously, because that's what yeah. exactly what the banks work off. Yes. Um, the long, short of it, and a quick way to look at it is that if you're earning less money, you need that property to create more. Um, because essentially the bank looks at your income and they're going to service you against that. Yeah. If you can get a higher yield on that property, which supports itself and the repayments, it's going to be less of a, a liability on yourself. And therefore the bank will like to lend more mm. according to that. If they see that you have a higher income and you're able to support the life journey of that property, then also the bank will be of an understanding profile that you can support that property. Yeah. And therefore you can put your cash into lower yielding equities or low yielding properties yeah um, and capitalize more of that cash flow i mean more of that equity gain beautiful so i mean that's the the basic rule of thumb obviously you know about that game in an art preaching converted yeah i get it and i'm glad it comes from you because every single bias agent that we talk to it's like work on borrowing capacity first Mm. because that's the if you can break through that the property is just the outcome yeah not just, but that's there's no borrowing capacity or serviceability with that to then enable you to build or scale your portfolio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Without being able to get the finance, without being able to um, sort of fund that purchase, there's no purchase, right? Correct. So that's the first step. Let's see how much you can borrow. Correct. Then from there, we can see how we, how we can sort of help you. Yeah, but it's also about buying the right asset that will allow you to buy the next one. Because mm. if your lending is then capped, then you obviously can't. Yeah, oh, correct. So it's balancing it out. Yeah. And again, personal experience, share, for example, yeah. have you experienced where you've maybe run out of equity or run out of borrowing capacity and then had to kind of think about your next your next maneuver after that? And how do you navigate those? Types fortunately, of- yeah. fortunately for me, no. Yeah. But um, that's probably because I went into the buying game a little bit later. Yeah. Um, okay. So for me, yes. Yeah. So my first property in Sydney, if I was to buy another property in Sydney, I would have been maxed out. Yeah. That's why I went regional. Um, also, I then had to go and put a few granny flats in to right. then increase serviceability to then continue buying. Yeah. So, okay. so yes. Um, as banks get tighter with lending and you reach those, as long as you want to, if you want to stick with a top tier lender where you've got your seven times mm. debt to income ratio, yeah. um, there is a point where your secondary dwellings and granny flats really play a part. Correct. Um, however, if you're comfortable to go to third tier lenders, then that's a different story. Mm. Interest rates with them is also a different story at this oh, stage. Yeah, well. I, I call it pay to play. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you want to get the property, then there's a price yeah, to pay. Yeah, and pay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's literally to get in. And then once you're in, it, it can change, right? Once you've got the property, then the uplift, it, pull the equity out, for example, then you pay the LBR. Yeah. So again, it's that whole. Um, I want to be very, very clear that this conversation is general in nature and not intended to give advice. We probably should have started with that. Um, but again, everything that we're seeing, all roads lead back to this is a game of finance. Mm. Unlock that and then you can unlock the scalability part of building yeah. a portfolio as yeah. well because you can have all the hunger in the world and all the means to grow and all the knowledge. But if you don't have that, the finance piece, yeah. it's just it's going to stunt your growth. 100%, that's, that's right. What, yeah. what I call the frustrated investor. Perfect. So... Someone comes to you, you take a brief, for example, and then the secret sauce is how you then put this deal together and how you go about securing it. But uh, a combination of here's what we're looking at, here's the data, here's what we're seeing on the ground, for example, how do you piece that together and start Mm. to present options to your clients, guys? Well, I think for us, it starts, we sort of do a a scenario case where we'll have a look at a client's situation financially, because that's essentially the tools we're using. Yeah. And then make a scenario out of that. If we purchase this property, is it going to allow us to buy another property? If the All answer right. is yes, then we'll proceed yeah. uh, into at least that market or at least that property type. 
Um, once we know what that looks like, then we'll disclose the markets that can then obviously support that path forward. And if our clients are happy with those markets, then we'll go and head into those markets. Yeah, okay. Once we present the markets, we'll then go into the property that we find inside it that basically supports the returns that we're aiming for. And uh, that's basically the, the beginning part of it. And mm. obviously that's, you know, finding, looking for properties was always the fun part. <laughs> Exchanging that contract and getting the building and pest and all the <laughs> other nitty gritty afterwards is um, it's what a lot of the, the, the team go through every day. And uh, we've got an incredible team. And um, Mike, well, our head buyer, basically controls all of that. Yeah. And um, does a fantastic job at it. But uh, it certainly, it does get tricky. And there's a lot of fun until that point as well. Mm. A lot of people forget about the fun. So secure the right asset in the right market, because obviously that's going to help you to get the next property. But uh, yeah, so from then on, um, we'll conduct the building and pest inspection, yeah. as we do with Mike. Um, well, Mike will then go through it. Um, but our uh, agents in the, on the grounds and all the different markets that we're shopping in will help us secure um, some good walkthrough videos so we have a good understanding of what those properties look like. Lovely. And then construct the contract based on what we see in those walkthrough videos. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's basically our negotiating game. So we can exchange the contract, which is fine, but then un up until that unconditional phase, uh, you still got to make sure that everything is correct on that property and mm. whatever's been negotiated on the contract is actually foreseen yeah. until that unconditional stage. It's not like New South Wales, you know. Yeah. So in New South Wales, you do all that stuff in the, part, right, in yeah. the in, before you actually go into the exchange. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so, so sorry, you going? Yeah. Huh? So like in the, yeah, like in, in, in Queensland, it's a mad rush to sign the contract mm -hmm. and you don't even, a lot of people don't even review anything. Like we, mm -hmm. I bought property personally, sight unseen, um, mm -hmm. just with a clause in there subject to an inspection. Yeah. You can't do that in New South Wales. Oh, or, correct. So it's just every state has different yeah. rules and regulations. And, and, and Darren touched on something uh, at the very beginning of the process, which I think is really important for the listeners um, to do, because I don't think many people do do this figure out what kind of property or what kind of results you need from property number one, which will help you get into property number two. Mm. That's really important. Yeah. Um, you can do that by speaking to your mortgage broker. Your mortgage broker, if they're investment savvy, yeah. they'll say based on your finances, on a $500,000 purchase, you should aim to get $550 per week rent. And when you do get 10% capital growth, that should put you in a position to buy your next property, assuming that lending doesn't change. Yeah, lending yeah. criteria doesn't change. Yeah. So that's, and I think that's another reason why 90% of investors get stuck. Because they're like, well, I've got a million dollar pre-approval. Let's go buy a nine hundred thousand dollar house. Well, then you're stuck because it's costing you two hundred bucks a week to hold on to. Mm. But if you find what kind of property you need to buy your next one, and having that conversation with your mortgage broker, then finding out what markets will give those results, that's going to put you in the best position mm. to continue purchasing. Yeah, well said. Yeah, that's one part. And then the next part that we see generally is uh, lifestyle creep. So as your mm. income goes up, there's discretionary spend goes up, maybe it's throwing a car lease in there, for yeah. example, credit cards that people refuse to cart. Um, and the challenge now is those those parameters are set and now maybe the goalposts have moved a little bit. Yeah. So again, it's going kind of, if if you're hungry to grow, then it's like help help us help you yeah. is the message that we generally say to a lot of people as well. Yeah. And those goal, goal posts are moving daily at the moment. Oh, at the moment, right? Uh, like every RBA rate yeah. increase changes it. Um, every living expense, every time you move up, for example, rent, you know, bonuses will put you maybe into a different living expense category, for example. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> lender selection, that'll change. And I mean, it won't surprise you guys because mm. you've probably been through cycles, uh, yeah. Bobby, mm. as well. So you come into favorable conditions that we've had for the last few years, it's open open slather for lending, that starts to change a little bit and then banks' risk appetites will then change and then in turn it's like they can easily just flip the switch yeah. on. And we saw that, you know, interest only a few years ago, for example, just yeah. overnight policies will then change. So you've got to be you gotta be ready to adapt. And that's the word that I'm I'm saying frequently is adaptability. And mm. that's probably a great lead into the next question, which is Goalposts are moving. So you take Queensland, for example, and the land tax changes. You take mm. stuff that's in Victoria, for example, landlord, a lot of the rules are changing there. We talk about, there's talk about rental freezes, for example, stamp duty changes in New South Wales. Then you go, there's a lot. You, you can go, there's a lot going on. And that can be all the reasons to say no, but there's plenty of reasons to say yes. So how does adaptability, how does that ability to kind of rise above all those changes, does that come up in some of your conversations as well? Yeah, definitely. I think like, I think let's take the Queensland land tax for an exa for, for yeah. example. I, f I personally feel 
the impact it's going to have. I was speaking to an, our accountant that we work really closely with and he was crunching right. the numbers, which gave me some clarity on it. Yeah. Originally, I thought it was going to have a major impact and everyone's going to rush out the Queensland market and, mm. and it, it's going to be a fire sale, essentially. And when we crunched the numbers, we sort of realized that you're only really getting hit with ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 tax bill if your property portfolio across the country is very con- like considerably high. So if you've got four, five, six million dollar, <laughs> if you've got like a five or six million dollar property portfolio, you can afford a ten thousand dollar tax bill. I'm just and using that's... I'm just using rough numbers, right? Correct. But it's it's not like someone who's got one property or two properties worth a million dollars is going to get hit with ten thousand bucks. Correct. It's going to be based on your wealth. If you can afford that many properties, then I mean I don't want to pay the tax, but you're in a position to pay it. Correct. It's uh, you're in a privileged position if you own that that certain level of value of assets and mm. it pushes you into that different uh, category as well. It's, I guess, no different to the extra tax that comes when you're positively geared. You're making money, now you're paying yeah. tax and you, you can't complain about it because you're making money now exactly. as opposed to losing it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, these aren't the reasons to invest. If you're trying to minimize land tax, for example, it's mm. again, we call it pay to play. They're the rules of the game mm. and unfortunately, Politicians can change the rules of the game, but lending has changed dramatically. I mean, from the time that you probably got your first loan to where you are now, it's a completely different kettle of fish. Yeah. To the way that you bought your first property, you know, buyer's agents then was, even then it was probably in its infancy and now it's coming to a, quite a different stage where it's maturing a little bit more, it's adapting and being sought out more as well, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you touched on, I think, I think, there are always going to be rules and regulations and, and, and things that come into play. You should focus on what areas are going to give the best performing um, results. Yeah. Like yeah. if Queensland is going to be the strongest performing capital city, paying tax on a property is no reason not to buy there. Yeah, buy it, get the strongest capital gains yeah. and then pay the tax. That capital gains will far outweigh the tax you're going to pay. Yeah. Um, that's how we see it. I mean, you, you know, how many people come to you and say, is now the right time to buy property? And how, how many times <laughs> have you heard that over how many years have you heard hey, that? You should have bought it like eight years ago. Exactly. Uh, or, and it's, and, it, then, and it's yeah. all circumstantial because it's always, it's always reliant on something happening in the market that's freaking people out. Right. Um, but the bottom of the line is that, you know, property is continuing to grow in value. Yeah. And uh, had you done what you intended on doing two, three, four, five years ago, mm. when you asked that question the first time, you'd be way more well off at this stage. Yeah, um, it's almost the trigger. If you're asking the question, then it's yeah. almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. Is now the right time to buy? Well, yeah. why isn't it? Yeah. 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 And so uh, like if people are asking themselves, is now the right time to buy? Like I did, an, I did a post, I did an article mm. in a group that we have on Facebook um, yesterday, I think it was, where there is nearly a million visa applications in the work, not all coming into Australia, but mm-hmm. a majority of them are, um, which they're trying to get through. Uh, the immigration system is trying to get through it. They've just employed 500 new staff wow. to just get through these visa applications. So everything, every time there is a downturn in Australia, it's the Australian government who opens its borders, ramps up migration. You get a flood of people coming in. Those people need somewhere to live. Exactly. Mm, they're generally going to rent as soon as they get to this country, at least for the short term yeah. until they can get on their feet. Yeah. yeah. Again, I don't want to jump the gun here, but supply is drying up, for mm. example, and then you're going to have this this wave of demand, mm. or at least a more consistent demand as well coming through. And so, well, if we're not having enough new builds coming through the pipeline, but so it's a good amount of demand, it, it should support a fairly buoyant market yeah. for some particular areas and some, some may, again, a normalized property market where some will outperform and some will have those periods of lull as well, isn't it? Hundred percent, and I like you know if you ever speak to a buyer's agent or a real estate agent, they're never going to say now is not a good time. But <laughs> like for those listeners, like I'm happy to happy to share. I, I exchanged on my most recent last week, and I um, know you're happy to share. It was only a month or two ago, yeah. so so like. Yeah, we're- I mean, you're you're putting your money where your mouth is. <laughs> exactly. So, so yeah. no one's ever going to say now is not a good time if you're in the real estate space. But yeah. if we're saying we're actually buying in today's market, mm. we honestly believe in 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 the industry that we're in and, and where the property market's going to go when this flood of migration comes in. Yeah, yeah. that's something for again. When I'm talking to buyers agents, it's you're you're living and breathing the advice that you're giving. So if I'm mm. telling clients, you're telling clients to buy them. It's like we're buying. It's skin yeah. in the game, isn't it? Yeah. 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 100%. So, uh, so we'll talk about, I guess, your philosophy and your outlook. So tell, take us through typical clients, for example. What do they look like and, and, and who's, the, who's the client tell that you serve? 
Because I mean, the investors right. agency lends itself to predominantly working with it's, investors, right? Yeah, well, obviously, yeah. So yeah. it's all investors, but it is a very wide scope of, of profile, I feel. Um, the reason why we do that whole balancing act in the beginning of understanding sort of what type of asset to purchase for the highest yielding or the lowest yielding for the highest growth return is because we've got such a wide demographic of clients. Yeah. Okay. So we've got some very established clients with some very good portfolios on their hands already. Yeah. And we're just repurposing a lot of their equity into more purchases. Um, you know, the older they get, they want to create more cash flow. Right. To create that retirement plan. So we're aiming for those types of properties for those guys. But then yeah. we get all the way down to like the first home buyers that are still you know, living with mum and dad, yeah. um, and they are saving up their pennies because they can't afford to buy in the northern beaches of Sydney. Yeah. So they're going to put the cash into something that is going to work for them for that eventual return. Yeah. Um, so it's really broad. It's a very wide range of clientele that we yeah. serve. Um, but essentially, it's guys that have got um, not enough time on their hands yeah. that want to, and they actually understand and respect the returns that uh, a property can provide to them. Yeah. Not just a property, but a high-performing property. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of our structure is based off imminent growth and then long forecast growth. Okay. The imminent growth is there to essentially try and create your deposits for you to buy another property, to create a deposit for you yeah. to buy another property, and so on and so on. It's balancing that for each individual, and that in, those individuals are, yeah. There's quite a, a few different types of characteristics yeah. about them. Professionals, tradies, predominantly. Or resi, or what's your mix? Or resi. Or resi, yeah. only, yeah. We look for land. Yeah. Um, so it's houses again. Um, obviously, you know, best yieldings, most amount of bedrooms. Mm. Um, and then, depending on what you're looking for in the equity, yeah. it's going to be capital demand. Uh, so, is there, how much is the shortage of supply? Um, what is the forecast of population movement over a certain amount of time? Mm. And, and we kind of match the economics with the profile of our clients just to try and balance that out for yeah. them. You mentioned something before, Bobby, where it's like we want to look for something that's a point of difference in this property, mm. what I'd call like an X factor, for example. So, from, and this is why I ask a lot of our buyers agents from a trained eye, because you're seeing hundreds of thousands of properties come through your mix and saying yes or no, yes or no. So, what is something that makes the cut, for an example, that you go, hey, that's got an X factor about it? And what is something you'd say that's a strong no to that if you weren't trained and had the um, trained eye for it? that you may actually fall susceptible to buying a property like that as well. Yeah, so that example I gave was for apartments in terms of something that's more, more unique. But in terms of houses, like a lot of our SMSF clients, they don't want something that is uh, that can you can build a granny flat or add a yeah, bedroom. Okay. It's just set and forget, low maintenance. Yeah. Um, they don't want to touch it for 20 years. They just want to triple their money in 20 years and, and let it sit there. Yeah. So it depends on the on, on the clients. But if our client is not an SMSF client or our client is, is looking to potentially add value, um, generally weatherboard we steer clear of. Okay. Generally pools we steer clear of. Yeah. Um, One of the things that we do look for is there's always a demographic of land size yeah. or a medium of land size within that area. We try to punch above it right. because that's going to be that. And that's not a huge X factor, premium, but it yeah. is the point of difference. Yeah. So if the market's generally, and we call it a suburban market, and if that market's median size of, of land is 450, we'll try for 550. Right. That's going to be the point of difference on that market. Awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, nice. And from a house perspective, you probably were seeing clients that maybe didn't take your advice and gone and bought something and they come back and you're like, we, we would have prevented that type of purchase, for example, mm. and here's why. Like, what are some of the... What are some, you mentioned pool, for example, it's you know, people, especially, yeah. green, especially like Queensland, I feel like yeah, if, you have, if your house doesn't have a pool, it's not a house. Yeah. Right? The, first, the first thing that comes to mind there was one of our one of our staff's friends spoke to one of our staff members to p help him purchase the property potentially and was asking yeah. for his advice and he gave his advice and then they went and did a purchase themselves. Yeah. They went and did a purchase in far north Queensland and got their... Uh, insurance bill of eight thousand dollars a year. All mm. oh, right, and they they're obviously in the red, well and truly in the red. You know that's eight thousand dollars insurance because you're in far north Queensland. It's going to be a big hit to your to your bottom dollar. Yeah. Also, far north Queensland, if you get um, if you get a cyclone or you go through you know a rainy patch and you lose all your tenants or whatever it might mm. be, um, these are some of the things that people don't people don't think about. Oh, so. no, a lot of insurers look at I don't know if it's a twenty third or twenty sixth latitude, but north of that, it's pretty much the Harvey Bay line. Oh, right, um, okay. Anywhere north of that in the tropics, insurance has started to increase dramatically. It's not off the normal yeah. scales because yeah. of the 
cyclonic weather up there. So there's a lot of markets it's where- It's the new players, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 the, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah. I don't know if anything comes to your mind in terms of what people have done where we shook our heads a bit. Um, <laughs> well, look, and it's, um, we, we like to buy established properties just yeah. because we know that the returns are, um, you know, you, you can see what's going on in the market and you can actually run with that race yeah, okay. rather than building. So we don't necessarily look for new yeah. builds. Um, purely or rather building and home and land packages and stuff like that. We, yeah. we like to, and we do understand the values of those assets and potential clients that would want to buy those. It's not to disown them at all, mm. but um, we like to get in with the growth and then hold that growth as it grows. Yeah. Um, but if you're in for the depreciation and if you're in for the capital gains after a period of time after building, absolutely, that's your game as well. But for us, we kind of stay away from that because we want to run with that race of growth while it's happening. Beautiful. Yeah. I feel like one of the lesser talked about um, strings to your bow is accountability. Here's what happens. You'll do an annual review on your client's mm. portfolio, mm. right? It's coming up. It's part of your, I'm assuming it's part of your process. Yeah. Doing it uh, actually this like, week. <laughs> right, there you go, right? It's the same for us. Yeah. And hit, run your property report. Here's your equity position, lower yeah. the rate, for example. Um, and then you are getting in touch going, hey, did you know you got equity? Mm. And so you mentioned there before that they're time poor. They're not checking, right? Mm. They've almost yeah. delegated, not abdicated, but delegated that to you guys. And yeah. it's like, that's that responsibility now, isn't yeah. it? To, to say, actually, did you know that to yeah. up in value, we potentially could look to go again? And if they were DIY, they maybe wouldn't have that yeah. that level of accountability or something that's we actually watching their portfolio as they would their own. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So we've actually got a little setup because um, we buy everything for our clients through their app. So when every client gets their own app, oh, nice. they see the whole process go through. It's yeah. directly connected to our CRM. So whatever we do, it's instant updates. They get to see exactly where we are. Wow. Um, and part of that package is once you do purchase it, it goes into the portfolio section. We don't... Obviously, again, it's not financial advice, but yeah. what we do is we take the market's growth inside the area and we attach it to the asset's value and we'll predict an, an approximate growth of equity within that property. Wow. That goes into the portfolio section of the app and that gets done every quarter for them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Excellent. So they do get to see that, which is really handy. Yeah. And, you know, we can call John up and say, hey, John, it's been, you know, 10, 12 months, whatever it is. Well, every quarter, so nine or 12 months. Yeah. Um, you've got another 16% growth. Have a think about putting some equity out. Mm. Yeah. yeah, our whole business model is based on recurring clients and building, not just buying one property, yeah. it's recurring cli- recurring properties for clients. Um, so that's why we have Darren's a, a whiz with tech and set up heaps of good systems and structures and, nice and, and whatnot in the back end. He has a love-hate relationship with it, <laughs> <laughs> but, he's, but he's good at it. So. I just want it to work. <laughs> yeah. That's my relationship with it. <laughs> yeah. So like we've, you know, Darren helps set that up and, and, and it's, it, it is because so many of our clients are return clients. They're not mm. just buying one. So it's been a game changer for that regard. Excellent. As well. yeah. And do you, I don't think opposition is the word, but they may need a little bit of help to then say, hey, look, you can think a bit bigger. And I I say, I think we think bigger for our clients than sometimes they think for themselves. Now, it's not tuning our own horn. I think yeah. genuinely have an optimistic view yeah. of the world, which is, hey, look, you can go again. And like, oh, I don't know. And mm. do you feel like you have to then kind of, Say, look, are you ready to go again? Is there is there that element to almost like coaching a little bit? Not, no, not really. I okay. think a lot of the time we get clients who are super cautious and super concerned at the beginning. Yeah. And they have a million dollar pre-approval, for example. They're like, look, I've never bought an investment property. I've never bought a property interstate. I, I'm not comfortable with it. I just want to buy one and see how I go. Touch wood, they do buy that one, and then they're like, "Well, that was really easy. The tenants are paying on time. The house hasn't fallen down. The market's gone up. Can we do it again?" Nice. So it's generally that yeah. it's generally that first time that uh, a first time buyer or a first time investor might be a little bit concerned when they've experienced it. They realize it's quite easy, and they'll. Yeah. Second time is far easier. Mm-hmm. Second time, they're the easiest clients yeah. we'll ever have. It's just like you tell me to buy, I will buy. It's That's just fine. like. Sweet. Yeah. Anything is good. It's, it's a vote of confidence, then, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Getting them across the line into those markets that they don't know about in the beginning and mm. educating them about the economics inside it. That's always tricky. But when they do come back for the second time, it's just like, yeah, cool. If you, whatever you say. Yeah. Um, not so much with everybody, but you know, there's yeah, always, it's a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So, I guess from your own journey and what you do is, you know, for your, for your day job, for example, what's your parting advice for someone that's looking to build a portfolio? And it's, I, I guess, I'll leave it up to you. To parting advice for someone looking to build a portfolio. 
I would say uh, ignore the media um, and educate yourself. They're probably the biggest because like we just went through a pandemic. Now we're going through inflation. We're going through interest rate rises. But if you look back over the last 20 years, there's been, mm. there's been the Af- Afghan war, Iraq war. There's been tech crash, GFC. COVID. COVID. Like there's mm. been so much. And this will continue happening. It will, it will happen over the next 50 years. Interest rates will go up. They'll go down. I guess you just need to ignore the media, but educate yourself to know what all these things mean and how you can protect yeah. yourself. Um, if you don't have time to educate yourself, then just get a good team around you who mm. can just do it for you. You took my two. Sorry. <laughs> as you can get it well, at least we're here from the same hint sheet here for you guys. So, so, yeah. we're, we're, we're together yeah. eight hours, nine hours a day. So. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Educate yourself, but if you can't get the right team around you, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's vital. Um, if you're going to be taking a stab in the dark, um, you know, it's only going to be as good as you hope. Um, yeah, you can't make those predictions without some knowledge. Um, yeah. And if you don't have the time to learn, then get somebody to help you. Yeah, beautiful. But also get in. Just mm. do it. Yeah, don't wait. Yeah, that's often people's regret, isn't it? Two regrets. I wish I got in earlier and I wish I didn't sell that property. It's yeah. kind of what we hear is uh, common ones, isn't it? Well, I wish I bought more. That's yeah. the other I one. I well, I wish, yeah. Yeah, I wish I didn't turn that one down. Yeah. yeah we yeah, get that yeah. quite a lot. There you go. Our clients will, will maybe get, because uh, they don't have to obviously purchase everything, everything that we present to them. Yeah. But uh, once they, uh, once they do get presented something, if it doesn't tick their approval, that's fine. Maybe it was too quick that we presented. Mm. Um, they leave that's that an interesting one, isn't it? When it happens too quickly, mm. uh, it's like, oh, freaked out. I thought it was going to take a bit longer, and this happened far too. It's almost yeah. like when a restaurant brings their meal out too quickly. It's like, what yeah. happened here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden, it sells for twenty five thousand dollars more, fifty thousand dollars more, whatever it is. Yeah, okay. And uh, so that's sort of, I told you so. But mm. you don't want to know I told you so. Yeah. so. <laughs> no, one, no one wants that. <laughs> no. Yeah, we've had uh, we've had instances where clients have um, have said no to a property because of three or four thousand dollars and we can't we don't we never force a property on a client we can try to talk them into it but if they're not comfortable that's fine yeah. if you think about like a four hundred thousand dollar property and uh, it goes up by let's just even say five percent that's you know 20k you're missing out on a property for five thousand dollars it's it's completely irrelevant you know mm-hmm. looking back six months and for your repayments it's Nothing. 10 cents a week or something I don't know right. making that up but, but that's, that would be another thing like if you know it's a good property in a good market and you can afford it um, don't lose a deal just because of a couple of grand uh, mm. don't get emotional and, and mm. be stupid because there's lots of good opportunities out there but um, but don't don't. Um, a lot of the time it's sort of like we find it's a pride thing it's like no mm. I've come down this much I've come up this much I want the seller to do this as well so I, I feel like a lot of the time put your bride pride aside and if it's a good deal just go for it put your pride aside I yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking to that point, I've, I've heard from agents now that that's something that's happening on the vendor side. Someone comes with a low ball offer, they're probably saying, well, I don't want to deal with that person and strike them off the list. And mm. it's like the agent, the real estate is probably saying the same thing, put yeah. your pride aside. And yeah. it's, uh, we say it's, we're trying to create a win, 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 win. Yeah. So a win for yourself, a win for the vendor, Absolutely. a win for, say, a real estate and a buyer's agent. Like there's, it, it's not win, lose. I think that's how we're conditioned. Yeah. to negotiate it's win-lose but actually it could be a win-win yeah. they're getting the price that they deserve you're getting the price that you want yeah. the agent the vice agent have done their job and they're getting paid their due rewards as well like there's nothing wrong with no. everyone winning and it's all circumstantial right so like so someone getting into a property at a certain time it's a win for them because they've got another 20 years ahead of them someone yeah. looking to retire and, and selling that so, property it's a win for them because they need that cash to go and so spend in retirement so it's, yeah. it's circumstantial great yeah. so don't be don't be afraid to make those decisions that you want to make though as well because mm. a lot a lot of times when we do have a client that feels it is too quick and and they pull out of that that opportunity, it might take another month to present to them. Oh, totally. And if if you're in a property market that's growing at two percent a month and you're on a four hundred thousand dollar property, that's eight thousand dollars of loss that you've just lost out on on mm. that growth. Yeah. So you know it's yeah good um, point. You know look at obviously be realistic, but obviously palatability is a big thing as well. Does yeah. it suit your palate? You know, is that what you're looking for? Are you comfortable to buy it? Comfortable to buy it. You don't have to yeah. see yourself living in it because you're not living in it. So no. Someone else with all due respect will, but mm. as long as it's meeting your criteria, it's passed your gold standard test as well, and it's going to deliver the results that you're expecting, then at that stage, it's why not as opposed to yeah. why, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Ah, beautiful. Hey, guys, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. The way this rolls off your tongue, it's clear that this is your day job, and, uh, <laughs> and it's also 
where you live and breathe, which is what I said at the start. So I want to say thank you very much for your time. Thanks for your shares as well. Really appreciate it. And what we are going to do is uh, for the investors agency uh, details, we'll include Darren and Bobby's info down below. So if you do want to reach out to them, we say to everyone listening, do your due diligence, find the partners that you feel aligned to you from a uh, from an ethical and from a business standpoint and also what they're looking to achieve personally and professionally. So uh, I hope that's been helpful. If you if you have found that helpful, please leave us a review or drop us a note with some questions that you want answered for future episodes and we'd love to help you on your journey as well. Guys, thank you very much. That's thank a wrap for another much. episode. We'll see you soon. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Cheers.